G'day, g'day, g'day. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Real Wealth Podcast with Stefan Angelini. It's the 17th of July, 2023. Happy Monday. We're going to go through a few topics today, um, and it should be a really good one. So let's first off, we're going to focus on asset class returns. I'm going to let you know how the international stock market, while the index was one of the worst performing asset classes last year, in 2023 so far, it's popped up to be one of the best performing asset classes. And I'll tell you what the numbers are. Uh, I'm going to go through ETFs and their popularity um, and how more people and more people keep investing into these things. I'm going to take you through mortgage stress and why CBA anticipates that it's going to get even worse over the next little while, so over the next six months. And then it's going to lead straight into Crown and the pokies. So why Crown or the new effects that Victorian rules are having on the pokies and how people have spent, lost $2.8 billion on the pokies compared to $2.1 billion just recently. And finally, I'm going to finish it off with a feel-good story about how someone in Kenya is turning plastic into bricks. So it should be a good one. Join in with me. Um, now, just letting you know that if you want to listen to the full podcast, head on over to Real Wealth Podcast with Stefan Angelini. If you are staying on the line, guess what? This is all just general information. Please don't consider it as personal advice. If you want any personal advice, please go and consult your licensed financial planner. Right. So let's get into asset class returns. Uh, best performing asset class in 2023 so far has been international stocks returning 22.6%. Now, last year in 2022, for the calendar year, they, they returned a negative 6.5%. So Australian equities returned the same negative, negative 6.5%. Now they're up 14.8%. Uh, best performing asset class in 2022, guess what it was? It was cash. Cash is still doing pretty well, returning 3.2% for the 2023 so far. But still, um, what's the old saying? The old saying goes, um, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So that happens with equity markets. Every time in history when markets have gotten tough, if you invested when it was down and you went against the grain, then you would have done really well. And hence, a lot of our job is to confirm, confirm emotional bias. Don't get stuck into emotional bias. Just invest as per your situation. So... That was pretty good. But let's look at over the longer term. So let's look at uh, from 2004 to 2023. So far, uh, so Australian equities has returned about 9% per year on average, being the best year being 28% and the worst year being down 20%. That's between 2004 and 2023. Now, stark difference to Australian international equities. The worst year was down was down 21%. Best year was up 33%. But on average, it's up 8.4%. So still, Australian equities proving to be the best returning uh, asset class overall. Um, and there was a report released by uh, Real Data, Core Data recently that said property market is now taking 15 years to double. Um, that's obviously, that's the entire Australian market. So it's not in segments. But if you just had an example of, if you wanted to double, double your money every 10 years, you need to be invested at for 10 years at, and return 7% per year on average. So Australian equities is kicking goals here, returning more than that per year um, on average since 2004. Let's look at ETF. So ETFs, exchange-traded funds. If you haven't heard of these, you should hear of them pretty soon. Uh, so they've grown to over $150 billion um, just in Australian money. Um, so that's really, really leading the charge. The main three providers are BetaShares, Vanguard, and iShares. They've taken in $1.8 billion, $1.5 billion, and $1.1 billion. So there's been $4.8 billion of net inflows into, into everything. So those three companies took on 80%. Now, if you don't know what ETFs are or why they get used or why we might use them in portfolios, basically they provide a they provide a convenient and cost effective cost effective exposure to a growing range of asset classes and investment strategies. So you can go in the index, you can choose a thematic, so you can choose a theme, you can choose robotics, all that kind of thing. Um, you can choose infrastructure, but still low cost. You get access to a basket of goods, and they all trade at their net tangible asset, which is why we, they're, they're more preferable than their counterparts, which are listed, which might be a listed investment company, which can trade at a, at a discount or a premium to what their actual assets are worth. So ETFs are still getting bigger, and you would have heard of them, and a lot of people are investing only through ETFs now. Let's focus on mortgage stress. So we've talked about asset class returns and, I guess, equity classes or Australian equities, international equities. They're more future indicators of what's going to happen in the markets. Um, whenever you feel it. So for example, in 2022, everyone knew interest rates were going to start going up. Equity markets started to get hurt a little bit. Um, but now there is a brighter future ahead. But still, if you are one of those people with a mortgage, things are getting tougher. 
says Commonwealth Banks. Commonwealth Bank has said um, mortgage stress will most likely rise in the months to come. They expect mortgage stress to continue to increase in the next six months as things get worse. And what they're basically saying is that, look, the cash rate, even if it remains unchanged, things are going to get worse. They feel unemployment is going to increase and go to above 4%, which still isn't that bad, everybody, just letting you know. Um, and inflationary pressures will continue to hold. So that this is coming straight from Chief Executive Officer of uh, Commonwealth Bank, Matt Komen. Um, and he's saying that he believes, or they believe, only about 60% of the impact of the 12 rate rises so far has flowed through to the Australian economy. And what he's anticipating is that by the end of the year, 85% of the impact of all these rate rises will start flowing through to the economy. So that means you'll see more pressure on households, which means there's going to be further pressure to put the cash rate down um, because more consumers are coming off fixed rate mortgages, people are spending less, energy prices are going up, and the situation is just getting a little bit worse. So we'll see what plays out here. But um, yeah, if you've got that mortgage stress, it's not a great thing to have. And a lot of Australians are getting impacted by it now. But what freaks me out, what freaks me out is that even though it is getting tougher to live and everyone can feel it, people are spending more on gambling. Now, if you are a gambler out there, it's cool. It's all right. I don't, I don't mind. But just, I'm just going to give you some numbers. So gamblers lost $2.8 billion at pokies, clubs, and pubs on the pokies during the 11 months of last financial year. So not long ago. Now, this is a report of data gathered by Victoria Gambling and, and Casino Control Commission. The year before, same time from 2021 to 2022, it was only $2.1 billion. So what's that? 700 grand. Two, four, six, it's up 30% when it is getting harder to live, which blows my mind. So the Victorian government says, you know, Dan Andrews, not many people like him, but he's doing probably doing something good here. He's got new rules coming into play uh, for the crackdown on pokies just to try and limit the amount that people are losing and the amount of money that these companies uh, are making. And, you know, the one beneficiary of this new rule is probably Crown Casino. Uh, so what the new rule says that any venue between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. cannot have the pokies open in Victoria. They're going to be forced to close the pokies, uh, except for Crown. Crown can do it. That's fine. Uh, but there are restrictions around it. So there's 30,000 electronic gaming machines in Victoria, and they actually have a, have a limit currently, a load limit for cards, and that's $1,000. They're going to decrease this to $100, which is a bit crazy. It's a big drop. Um, and they're going to make all new machines be forced to have a spin rate from increasing the spin rate from 2.1 seconds to three seconds. So that gonna, means it's going to take longer for people to press the button and to lose the money, which could be really good. Um, the next part about this is what I'm trying to get to is that, give me a sec, it's gamblers at South Bank Casino, there's now going to be a mandatory limit on cards and you need to show your identity to get the limit on your card and you can't break the limit for 24 hours. And you need to take 15-minute breaks every three hours of playing. So there's a whole lot of new rules that are restricting how much people can gamble, how it's going to hold up, I don't know, uh, but it's going to be really interesting to see. So it's good to know that there are things coming into place because gambling addiction is a huge problem in Australia. Finally, I'll finish on a good note, turning plastic into bricks. So um, a young lass over in Kenya named uh, Nzambi Mati has opened a company called Genji Makers. Basically, what they're doing over there is they're finding getting plastic, single-use plastic, which provides, uh, which is a you know a big, a big polluted, um, especially in countries like Kenya, where their recycling system is not as great as countries like Australia. Taking that plastic, combining it with sand, turning it into bricks. Bricks can be used for pavers, for house, houses, for a whole bunch of things. But getting actual use out of that plastic is amazing. So you might have heard of it already, but I really only heard about it today. I think it's fantastic. I say good on her. She's doing a great job. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. That's the end of the podcast today. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to listen to us today. I'll come back to you soon with some more updates. Hopefully get a little bit of financial knowledge. Keep on investing. Cheers.